don't think I left any behind. Terribly sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, so to the slurp. Yeah. I think it should break into two pieces uh, and go in the slurp. I'm hoping. Okay. Mm. Or if, if you want to try, if that doesn't work, um, well, let's let's do this first. You're at fifty percent. Thank you. On jar six. Oh, do you want me to come up? Um, no, I think you're okay. I was just okay. parallax error. Uh, uh, actually, yeah. Sorry, okay. I'm hitting that rock. Option B is to open the box in front, like an inch or a few inches. Nope. <laughs> 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 it's more than my life's worth. I bet we can get it. The slurp should be fine. Okay. I promise. I may. I have made promises, Steve. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did too. There's a note yeah. here from Lynette that says, "Do not open for a bio box." No, I, absolutely not. Don't I even think to, about it. I have to work with <laughs> James again in like a month. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe less. I can't. I could never face him again if I open that box. They must have really gone through some stuff because we uh, we both received uh, very severe <laughs> warnings. <laughs> I think they went through some stuff. That's pretty traumatic. Yeah. yeah. It's also in the data chair. Don't open forward wow. box again. <laughs> Multiple places. That's great. There you go. <laughs> I also love the please do not. I mean it. Please don't. Yeah. But again, Seriously. just in case you didn't hear it, don't. <laughs> I can tell <laughs> you about to think about it. <laughs> It didn't say, oh. don't even do it a little, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> You're at 90. You want to It has to be reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Reasonable. Well, it's uh, like this go. bit is. Guidelines. <laughs> complying with guidelines. <laughs> They're going to kick the door down and come <laughs> yell at all of us. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah, I definitely think um, if you fly backwards, it'll okay. push it forwards. That makes sense. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. That's great. Nice. The, the backwards trick slurp shot. Yeah, nice. I have to fly forwards again wow. for a little yeah. bit, but that worked great. That was lovely. Good idea. Nice. Kirk is moonwalking. Nice. Moonwalking. So one of the pieces it's in, in there. the car, yep. Good. And two. Great. Both of them that was um, 157. And there it's. 1579. The chat is egging us on to use the box. <laughs> 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 you all won't get in trouble, that's why. <laughs> you have no consequences. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, do it. <laughs> Devil on our shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, somebody is asking about the shark we saw last week. Um, I think we saw two. It wasn't during a dive. It was um, ooh, off the side ooh, of the ship. That is gorgeous. I know this guy. It was an oceanic oh. white tip. Beautiful. Wow. Two oceanic white I tips. I love these. Yeah. They're amazing. Beautiful. Is this the jumping one? Uh, yeah, it's been known to do that. Really? Yeah, they jump and they swim. Wow. It's wild. They the do? The yeah, they Syrian swim. Bit. It's the eeriest looking thing I've ever seen. How does that thing swim? This is a Syrianthid. Is it like uh, all legs? Syrianthid? Yeah. Is it that a is, type of anemone? It is not an anemone at all. Wow. What is it? It is an anemone relative. Uh, uh, on the same level as anemones, or uh, rather as uh, um, uh, hexacorals and octocorals, so it's a totally different... Uh, the shadow of the tentacles under the rock are really cool. Uh, wow. Can you put it in the chat? If you look closely, yep. Looking as closely as I can. If you look closely around the, the mouth, you'll see a second row of tentacles. They're really obscured, but they're very fine. Uh -huh. And that's a uh, distinguishing characteristic for this group. Wow. wow. Okay. That thing is magical. Yeah, I would love yeah, it's pretty to see that swimming. We've, we've collected wow. it several times, and it's, it's honestly a nightmare. It's so <laughs> eerie. It's really difficult. Like We've sampled some of the tentacles, um, and then they hop off, obviously. Yeah, they it's, swim away. It's really, it's really a mess to process. Oh, is it really? It's How so? They, so all when when these animals become uh, stressed or or um, 
basically, yeah, basically stressed, all of their tentacles pop off. And so you're oh. left with basically the body you want to uh, oh, yeah. and a bunch of tentacles in a jar. And uh, it can be very tedious to pick them out because you can't really sieve them out. They turn into a gelatinous mass. Um, but you need to have to need to try and preserve as much of it as possible. And uh, this is the tedious uh, processing. Interesting. And what kind? If it's not an anemone, what kind of animal is it? It's a Syriantherian. Syriantherian. That's almost as hard to say as an anemone. <laughs> Syriantherian anemone. Yeah. Really pretty. I love that color so much. Hello. Good. How are you? Thanks. <laughs> We've had a pilot swap in the front row. <laughs> How much longer do we expect we have before we start ascending? Uh, what time is it? It's six. Let me know when you're ready and I'll put in a move. I'm happy, yeah. Thanks. Happy. Probably, I think happy, we're going to start ascending around I'm 10 happy. p.m. Bridge, no? Uh, five zero meter north. How are you doing, Nick? You're quiet over there. Be help if uh, I didn't have my mic on. <laughs> that would help. Go for Zoom. Nice. Uh, what do we have here? Chrysogorgia colony with a squat lobster. You can come wide. So Steve, what are you thinking about uh, for our trajectory up to waypoint seven? Just follow the ridge. Yeah, I want to get up on top of this um, ridge a little bit more. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll know in the okay. next couple of moves it, what it's going to look like. Yeah. Yeah, we've and got about um, about a hundred meters until it should start flattening it out. Nice. Even less than that, fifty to hundred, and then uh, to the top of this little plateau, it's. 270. Yeah, yeah. I want to leave uh, the next watch something to do on the seafloor. <laughs> Come wide. That's kind. Yeah, yeah. I don't want them to have all blue water. But we have, um, you know, maybe we can head up and kind of zigzag along um, toward the northwest direction once okay. we reach the top of the ridge just to see what's up there. I suspect should have some nice current flow, which I'm excited to see if it's consistent with the higher densities and diversities we've been seeing over the past uh, hour or so. Because it has been changing pretty rapidly as we've uh, come up past, uh, I could say about mid-slope. Maybe we're at 2,400 meters or so. Right now we're at 2,290. Go for zoom, please. 
Gabby, name that coral. <laughs> <laughs> Pop quiz. Carmella Cordia. It sure is. Yep. You were off SPL, what was that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ramilla Gorgia. Wait, Ramilla or Vermilla? Come on, please. Ramula Gorgia. Ramula. Ramula. Ramula Gorgia. Ramula. I'm just going to have to see this. That up. brittle star just leapt. Yep. <laughs> it was out of there. Gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I would, would really like to figure out why they do that one day. Yeah. Why they jump like that. Abandoned ship. It's really funny to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's great when they like a far distance and it's just incredibly <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> very, very slow. Slow motion, yeah. So I need to clarify about this coral. So Remula Gorgia, is that the family name? Genus. That's the Phoenix. Genus. Genus with a G. The, the genus. Yeah. Is there even a Phoenix? There's a phylum. 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 A genus with a G. <laughs> Where did I hear Phoenix from? I don't know. Okay, so that's the genus. Really How are we doing on the rock space? Um, throw that down the line. You will have a problem sorting them out, probably. But you can always put another one in there. Kay. There's some room in F, but there's a rock in there. So how many samples do you think for the rest of the dive? Rock samples? Yeah. Um, one. Maybe. Okay. I'll hold off. Choose wisely. Yep. The the inboard boxes yeah. are, are much easier if we need to double up uh, because it's just top bottom. It's right. not much sorting to be done. Right, but that would be a small rock. So potentially four small rocks, potentially one okay. large rock. So five. Go for soon. It's an abandoned crinoid stock on the left. So, Brittany, Ramilla Gorgia is the genus. It's in the family Chrysogorgia. And then the species, have we been seen as Militaris? Is that what we've been seeing? Thank you, Bronwyn. So, the family name is Chrysogorgia. Yeah. The genus is Ramilla Gorgia. Ramilla Gorgia. Thank you. <laughs> the genus, not the phoenix. <laughs> it's, yeah, the phylum is Nidaria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's as far as I go. I get, I get the Nidaria part, and then all of it just crumbles for me. All right, so great. Thank Bridge, you so much. Oh, uh, we can have five zero meters. They taught oh. us a great mnemonic in school, but not, it wasn't that great, obviously, because <laughs> I forgot it. Uh-oh. If it comes back to you, let me know. <laughs> Talus coming up, you know what that means, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm just. Oh, I don't. I don't think we know. I don't think we we're we're mind melding here about what that means. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, yeah, I even on this talus material, there's more corals than we had, and the talus slope a bit mm. further down. So maybe 
even though the substrate here may not be as cohesive, or maybe it is, um, things are things are stable enough here to grow, uh, which could be influenced by the currents Go yeah. in this area, which allow these animals to grow faster. Oh, wow, what is that? Can we look closer right there on the le right laser dot? It's a squat. Left laser dot. Squat. Yeah, what's up there? Somebody got kicked out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Came home late last night. It's the first time I've ever seen one that looks like it belongs in the coral, not in the coral. We haven't seen them uh, jump out as we approach, though. So the squat lobsters jump out. Come on, please. No, we've seen a few of them. As we get closer, they like jump out of their Chrysa Virgin. Really? Yeah. Okay. Wait. I haven't seen yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Other yeah. people. Was it when it I was? It doesn't happen dinner? often. <laughs> I remember you making a comment about yeah, it, you Steve, even and said you were it. like, "That's not." That's, that's abnormal during, for them during to do collection? That. No, we would just approach to yeah. like take a zoom. And it happened at least out. twice. Oh. Definitely happened. It's very strange. Yeah, <laughs> very strange. Uh, yeah you're talking about Steve, how go get some, sleep. some of them are like very, um, some of them like to hang on, but not all of them. Yeah, I remember you talking about high, like high and fidelity. And high fidelity. Yeah, high fidelity and changes at depth. Yeah. You better watch what you say, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Umbrella's gonna tell you about it later. We're all listening. So here's one. Darn King Philip came over for great soup. Darn King Philip. That's great. That's that's not what I learned in school, and I don't think that's Darn a very good name. Darn King Philip came but over for great soup. Dear King Philip. Dear King Philip came King over Philip. for great soup. Dear King Philip. So I guess it depends if you like the royal family or not, and it's either darn or dear. <laughs> <laughs> Is this uh, a mushroom coral there? Go for soup. I think we're actually. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, we've achieved a pretty good density and diversity here. Um, can we take a Niskin sample at your convenience? Okay. Within a couple meters of the bottom. What are we sampling? Niskin. Niskin. Okay, cool. We can do one. Okay. That is not a touch screen. ROV, are we okay Still keeping the ship moving? Uh, yeah. Hold. Okay. 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 Oh, we checked. Thank you. So in this area we have Vermilagorgia, Anthemastus. And we're going for one data? Yes. Um, yep. As well as some Chrysogorgia colonies. Uh, we have a Norella species we sampled just a few minutes ago, so those are in the in the area. Uh, we have what else? I wouldn't call it in the area, but we have some Hemicorellium also we saw uh, just less than a half an hour ago. Or uh, video, can I get a little ago? bit more light on the scene? Yep. Data, are you watching the Niskins? Yep. What happened to the number two ball? I'll answer in just a just a second here. That's Pop. it. That's there it goes. Very nice. Uh, it got pulled off. Okay. And we don't have any more of the cute little balls, and the cute little balls are really difficult to use anyways. All right. So we went back to basics. We've had rings there for a long time. So that was 158 now, I think you already got it. Yeah. It's an interesting graph in front of us. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Okay, is, and the ship's still moving, so let's bring into gear to catch up. And if anyone's wondering, it's been 330 meters since our last rock. Sure has. <laughs> We're gonna hold off on rocks for a while. He hasn't found the one yet. Mm -hmm. You taking some time for yourself, Nick? <laughs> yeah, we just a little crowded <laughs> in the boxes. <laughs> some of those McNuggets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so as we are making our ascent on this unnamed seamount, we are starting to definitely see a lot more um, more on biology than yes when we, we started are. off. On cue. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much right, right as we crested this ridge. So we'll, we'll slow down a little bit if we can, uh, just kind of probe around as we summit this uh, seamount. Yeah. So I'm interested in this we white colony there. Left. That's very unusual. We could just we let it run out and then. Okay. Uh, let's stop. stop. Yeah. Bridge now. Because we're like 10 meters behind. Full position. Go for soon. All right. I'm getting very interested in this white colony right there. Let's do a quick zoom on it just to confirm. Okay. I'm not so interested anymore. Oh, man. It's a bamboo coral. Which kind of coral? It's a bamboo coral. I, I, I was hoping it was a Sibu bubble, uh, white bubblegum coral, but it's not. Mm. So, just a bamboo. There's a brisingid star on a dead sponge. But and is that an anemone, Steve, or is that a, one of the tricky ones? Yeah, it, 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 it looks Atalanta's like... Atalanta's going to keep moving it forward, could be. so eventually you'll get tugged. So okay. uh, can we get another zoom, uh, or whenever you're... It's okay, another zoom on that bamboo coral that had its pop polyps closed? Maybe uh, a, a closer zoom. That's under the lasers? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I okay, just wanted to take a look at the branching um, pattern and placement of the, the nodes relative to the branches. This... So it's an internode brancher, which is something we don't often see. But note that too that the way the current's moving through this colony, it's vibrating it, which suggests that the current's pretty ripping up here. I don't know, is that something you feel also in the vehicle? Yeah, I do need to catch up with that Atalanta. Okay, go for it. So this was kind of the idea is that as we crested this ridge, which now puts us on the essentially the top of the seamount, not the, the peak, but you know uh, beyond the shadow of the current um, from uh, from the northeast, we're starting to see a lot more high density biological communities and uh, a lot higher diversity as well, which could also be a function of the shallower depths that we're moving through. Oh yeah. So definitely seeing more. Large bathy pathies there. Um, we don't have to zoom on that. I'm just pointing it out for uh, for data. So different, lots of different types of coral in this area. And so somebody in the chat was wondering: Is what we're seeing right now is this considered a coral reef, or what? How is this different than a coral reef? Um, so coral reefs generally are restricted to shallow water. Yeah. Um, and they're primarily composed of stony corals uh, or sclerotinian corals. In the deep sea, we often have um, more uh, what are called coral gardens with, because octocorals and sea fans and uh, sea whips and black corals as well as you know, zoanthids and you know these types of more branchier colonies rather than the reefier structures dominate the diversity and abundance down here. And uh, yeah, we're we're just at the top. While so we'll you know it, the densities are higher, I don't think it's it's a crazy coral garden yet. I think it, we're still pretty sparse, but there actually is a 
uh, a formal definition to coral gardens, uh, high density um, coral gardens are reported as 3.85 colonies per meter squared exactly. 3. Point, that was that was too fast. 3. what? 3.85 colonies per meter squared. 3.85 colonies per meter squared. Yeah. Got it. That was based on a paper that came Go out a um, few years ago. Well, uh, 15 years ago now, um, from the Aleutians, where a coral garden was really first uh, used and described as a unit. Excellent. So we have been seeing coral as well as sponges like this one here. So how are coral and sponges different? They they belong to two different phyla. So they're both invertebrates, but they belong to two different phyla. They're probably among the, the more basal of the metazoans, so meaning they're the earliest, um, uh, earliest groups to uh, evolve from single-celled life. Um, right, thank you. Sponges. Uh, perhaps more so uh, than corals, and uh, there's some debate actually whether tinafores and sponges are more basal. You know, which one is the more ancestral, and that's always some interesting literature. It goes back and forth every few years, but there's some really cool new um, genetic methods coming out that shows that tinafores are actually more of a, an older lineage than sponges, which is actually really exciting, based on a cro um, okay. uh, chromosome. Uh, mapping. Interesting. Science. Um, anything else that we want to do here before? Yeah, can we, we uh, just uh, let's. Are, are we caught up with the ship? Yep. Okay. Is there anything we want to do? Okay. Can we take a look at this uh, pink colony? And after we do that, we'll uh, put in another move. Okay. Uh, moving slowly up the ridge here. Is this a zoom or a potential for sample? No, no sample. Cool. In that case, I'll put in a move now, since it'll take a few minutes to uh, get moving. So, Steve, do you want to continue up to the top here? Still go north? Yep. Uh, let's okay. go north for a couple more moves okay, and Great. just see how this the landscape develops. Great. Bridge now. Five zero meters north, please. This is a precious coral, Hemichorallium, with an Asteroschema, or, well, Urialid, Urialidae. What's uh, the difference between a Hemichorallia fan? and a Paragorgia? Like, I uh, think, to me, I haven't, they look like, both like pink fans. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's, that's with good reason, because they were just recently revised and placed into the same family where previously they were split. Um, with the precious corals being in one group and the bubblegum corals in another, but they have remarkably similar sclerite morphologies, you know, the small microscopic structures, as well as um, now uh, greater uh, appreciation for their genetic similarity as well. So they're actually more closely related, but in a, from our you know, field perspective, uh, the Paragorgia bubblegum corals are uh, have a much more porous uh, matrix in their axis, so the skeleton that makes up their structure. Uh, which allows them to be a bit more flexible than the coralliids, um, the precious corals, which have a much denser axis and uh, are more, much more fragile because of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I still like it. What's the What's the physical differences? What's the morphological differences that allow you to pick out the difference? So you would have to look at sclerite morphology. So that, oh, okay. That you have to get in real close. Yeah, you, yeah. There's, there's very small differences, but generally, okay. The two characters I use is does the colony flex in the current? Okay. And number two, what's the shape of the polyps? Is it hemispherical? Are they rounded, or are okay, they columnar? And hemichorallia would flex. Uh, inflexible. Okay. Yeah. There's a sea star. Can we take a look at the sea star if you have scope? Uh. Let me reset the DBL. I mean, it looks like it is. Yeah. Steve, someone in the chat wants to know, are there deep sea stony corals? Of course there are. We collected them um, just this dive. While we haven't been seeing colonial uh, stony corals, um, so the they do coral. exist. Yeah, cup corals. 
uh, yeah, we're going um, up to the top. But of the colonial ones, ones, you don't start there. seeing them until, so. at least in this area, area shallower than maybe 1,500 meters. And at that, and, and then you would probably start seeing small colonies of Enolopsamia. Yeah, we probably have like three to four more moves to the top of the ridge and then we'll head northwest. Okay, I, I, can hear you. I can kind of hear you. But Correct, that'll be the northwest, yep. I think these are, this one is a coral predator. Usually we oh. see some, most of these gonadotropids predating upon corals, sometimes not. Um, but this one might be seeking out its next meal. Biting its time. It's in a rush, right? Yeah, I'm like looking at it as it moving at all. <laughs> And shrimp. Thanks and for the shrimp. <laughs> um, yeah, and that plays into another question somebody was asking. Are the sea stars, um, or the brittle stars, a parasite or an associate on the coral? So if I'm not mistaken, the brittle stars are only associates. They are not interested in eating the coral. That's right. Yeah, there's a couple of different observations uh, that have been made over the years. And namely, uh, on most of the corals, uh, it's thought to be a commensal relationship whereby, you know, maybe the brittle star benefits slightly uh, from uh, being on the coral and uh, giving it some ability to fish out into the water column for plankton, uh, planktonic food. Um, but perhaps the, the coral may be also benefit in that yeah, the, the action of the brittle stars keeps the coral from uh, being grazed upon perhaps by predators or parasites. So that's for the brittle stars as opposed to the one that we just saw. Um, I don't know what kind of sea star that was, but Steve said that's a predatory one. So that one absolutely would be eating the coral. Yeah, they're in different groups. So the one is called the asteroidia no, no. and one is called the uh, ophiroidia. And the asteroids are usually the predators. Seeing some very beautiful sponges in the shadows. I'm excited to get a closer look. It's a really nice spot, it's starting to develop quite nicely. Now you see where all this furriate, um, these uh, skeletal looking sponges were accumulating from down below. They're all seem to be up here and in various stages of degradation. Is there a chance to zoom uh, right here at the base of this one on the right hand side? Yeah, come around. Did you want more of an angle from the side to see what's at the base? Or um, is this blocking it slightly? The closest you can get if, if you have the time and scope. Okay, yeah. Um, go for zoom, please. Not sure. Uh, oh. oh. Yeah, wow. Hello. It's one. Well, there were two there. Yeah. These are um, oh. unit opsis, I think. Are they usually territorial? Like, do you think that could have been because of the other lobster, not necessarily because of us. I feel like I haven't seen a lot of them hanging out together. That's the most I've got. Um, I remember Steve saying before that they are oftentimes in mating pairs. Sometimes, oh. yep. Oh yeah, there's the other one right there. But it's at not the bottom. clear. Munidopsis tend to be Good. more solitary, where I think the ones that are in the coral colonies Perhaps uh, not so much. Hmm. The thing on the left looks like a bone. Thanks. 
Speaking of, whatever happened to your claws, Nick? What'd you do with them? <laughs> You're keeping them forever, claws? right? Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> I wear them at night. <laughs> Didn't I make them this morning? Yes, you did. <laughs> remains to be Suspicious. Seen. So our viewers are totally noticing that so we have lots and lots of brittle stars okay. that uh, call this area their home and they're wondering, are they all the same kind of brittle stars or are they different types? Okay. Come on. Nice. Yeah, there's a large bamboo coral fan to the right. There's also, we're starting to see some of these uh, Candidella uh, unbranched coral colonies as well. Uh, so, I, so far, I think two, two different bamboo coral species that I can discern. Um, still seeing Remula gorgia. Still here. Do we just want to do like a 270 move um. and just go full? Yeah. Yeah. Bridge enough. Interesting to note too that. Can we um, replace this with a three zero meter two seven zero? Can we drop a target tier too and say sure. coral garden? Even though it's not three point two colonies <laughs> per meter squared, we'll uh, we'll take some liberties here. Coral garden, what's it? It's a coral garden compared to what we've been seeing. Yeah, it's it's been pretty good compared to the previous dive or previous parts of the dive. To your knowledge, Steve, are there any medicinal benefits that coral or sponges can offer to human beings? Uh, just yes, and that there has been re some research done on that. Um, some corals from the Antarctic have been found to produce chemicals with um, anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, I think Paragorgia among them too, um, from uh, from the South Atlantic, I believe. But uh, yeah, yeah, several of these papers uh, come out every year, but they don't really get a lot of press because they're just discovery of you know this novel compound. It's really up to um, others to develop and synthesize those uh, because it's not really pragmatic to go out and harvest a bunch of corals just for their uh, what we call marine natural products. For their brain natural products? Marine natural marine, products. Okay. Yeah. Okay, natural products, chemistry. Yeah. Hey, Gabby, you're off FCPL. We can't hear you. <laughs> I have seen like the divers down at uh, Palmer Station on the Antarctic Come Peninsula on. harvest a whole lot of um, like sponges that we then freeze dry so that they can take them back to the lab. But that's like by no means um, something that you could like make a medication out of. It's just like it's the first step so they can learn how to synthesize the compound. Um, but they do have to like go down in dry suits and harvest each individual sponge in order to make anything of it. Wow, how deep are they diving? Um, I couldn't tell you. Actually, that's a good Leela question. Um, they're, they're not, they don't have to max out. There's so much, um, there's so much biodiversity right near the surface there. Uh, it's like, you can see it when you're above the water, just in a small oh, okay. boat. Nice. Is it hard driving through this? Is it because of the current? No, it's just the Atalanta is far away, but oh, it's okay. the vessel moves bringing it closer. Okay. Yeah, I'm we're making a move. I'm just trying to gauge, west. you know, because I can see the Marine's nose moving pretty fast across this outcrop. I was just wondering if it was so strong. No, we're just tail we're pulled totally tail to tail, like maximum sort okay. of distance from each other. Cool. Or not cool, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean. Go for soup. <laughs> Um, 
this looks like a coral we sampled a few days ago. Um, it has this really interesting biserial uh, polyp pattern that comes out only of you know opposite sides. Oh, interesting. Interesting. The branch. That's so cool. Very distinctive. Okay, add another three zero meters. Node branching, to sort of or there. slightly above the node, perhaps. No, it was a node branching. A little offset. Yeah. Amazing. Somebody noticed on the left side of the larger coral, there were these three kind of pinkish red things that look like anemones. Those are actually mushroom coral. Yeah, yeah we, we collected one of those yesterday. It turns out they actually probably are more like pseudoanthemastis than anthemastis, but it's one of these things that you really won't be able to tell for sure until you can get it back to the lab. The difference between what we are seeing now versus when we started off this morning is very different. Um, somebody had a question a while ago. I wasn't able to get to it at the time, but they were wondering, why do we start off at the bottom of a seamount? Yeah, I was looking at it. What's up with that? I don't know. It looks like a, like almost a little bit of faulting or a, you know, like a dipping strata almost. Um, it's kind of hard to tell without in the big picture. It's definitely not as smooth, crusty up here. It's more mm -hmm. broken. Yeah. Sorry, Brittany. You're good. Um, yeah, the question was, why do we start from bottom to top instead of top to bottom? North, OK. Bottom to top allows us to keep the seafloor in view at all times. And if we're going downslope, um, it's very difficult to drive and keep the bottom in sight at the same time. That's fair. It's very fame. Yeah. Okay, so uh, van team, four to eight. I have a pack of uh, Hello Panda chocolate uh, crisps oh. left behind, and I'd like to offer them uh, to the first person, or no, to the person who guesses most closely the so UTC burial. time. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, the UTC mind. time that we will see a squat lobster next. <laughs> oh. And I will wow. take your bets now. Oh, I like this. I'm going. Uh, it's the UTC time up above the video feed. So, wait, who? Uh, who gets to make the call it's on if they see a squat lobster at time? Well, we have to <laughs> <laughs> Steve lobster. says, how much power do I have? Because I think video actually has advantage there. Maybe. Yeah. I, I, will, I will abstain from this uh, competition. Oh, okay. Wow. All right, 450. 455. We go 452. Okay. I'm going to say... Um. 458. Okay. I'm not sure why Steve's abstaining, but. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even quite hear what the prize is. I just want to win. Oh, it's uh, chocolate cookies. Chocolate cookies, okay. Hello, Panda chocolate. <laughs> that was the one that, yeah, that have like the chocolate in the middle oh, of the cookie. Oh, yeah. uh, nom, nom. <laughs> nom, nom. And then they have pandas on the front, so, oh. you know, it's win win. Win win. <laughs> Any other guesses? Gummy bears, panda cookies. See a trend. So Nav, are we um, are bypassing waypoint six and going to seven, or are we uh, going to six? negative? We're we're just moving the ship over so we can get um, back up this ridge. Uh, but we actually did waypoint six A. We created a new waypoint. So from six A, that we are going to six now. Yeah, going on the ridge. To, the ridge to seven. Goes. We're gonna do this. Okay. It just looks like it goes down. Uh, okay. 
sometimes when we bridge goes north. When we yeah. draw okay. the points in Flitter Mouse, okay. they don't, don't exactly align up with the bathy as we would like, so we have to just maybe adjust the points slightly so that we can make sure that we're making progress along the features that we want to see. I just can't uh, get my heading because Atalanta is a little bit far away. It's just pulling me. Okay. I'll do it. Steve, yeah. the brittle stars that we've been seeing on these dives, are they mainly, um, are they generally from the same family or are they different kinds? Uh, the brittle stars, you say again? Yeah, brittle stars, like, the di have we been seeing different kinds of brittle stars? Are they from different families or? Different families, yeah. There's, there's quite a diversity of brittle stars here. Uh, three meters, I'm gonna put another one in. The yeah. most common ones or on the I was corals going to, we've but been I can seeing have been the Urealids and the uh, Ophiocanthids. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's back up and see where where we are. Okay. Hello from Louisiana. Thanks for tuning in. Chat is wondering what has been our personal favorite parts about this dive. Ooh. Nick, I can guess what yours is. What's that? Collecting rocks. Maybe you seeing that. Maybe the columnar basalt. Yeah, I think we can go yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was really cool to see that. Yeah. Just a little glimpse of it. Yeah. A little small outcrop. Yeah. Hopefully we see more. Okay, sounds good. I like seeing the coral garden. It's been a while, I feel like, since we've seen one of those. Like the really big, dramatic coral. Yeah. Or excuse me, the, uh, yeah, the coral and the sponges. Mm -hmm. I liked seeing those three mushroom coral in a row. That was kind of weird. That and was that cool. one that was sucked in, I hadn't seen one like that either. Yeah, I missed it. Was, was that a mushroom coral with all of its, um, that was all sucked in? I think so, yeah. Okay. That's definitely what I wrote it down. <laughs> so. Hopefully. Okay. So Matt, what's been your favorite part of the dive so far? Uh, <laughs> stand by. <laughs> okay. We're trying to get reoriented here. Oh, okay, sorry. Very nice stand of uh, bamboo corals here. Oh, seriously. Wow. Well, yeah. Notice they're all on the, well, let's see. I'm not sure how nice. how this ridge is oriented quite yet. So I guess they're just, just on the cusp of the summit of this ridge where it starts to moderate, the slope starts to moderate a bit. Okay. Uh, is that a squad? Oh, yeah, there's another individual of that possible oh. new species oh, oh, of Morella. That's really. <laughs> Wishful thinking. You seeing things, Logan? It's wishful thinking. It's getting closer and closer to my guess. Soon it will get farther and farther away. <laughs> the <laughs> chat says it's going to be 0515. Sponge graveyard. 0515. 0515. If they get it right, I they don't know the if they can get the 
I know. How are we going to get <laughs> our prices? Okay. <laughs> this looks like a pile of bones, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Yeah. I wonder how long that's been there for. A pile of sponge bones. Sponge bones. Yeah, yeah and, and no, like notice bones. too yeah. that wherever you do have those piles, they do tend to accumulate sediment, which is uh, potentially an interesting observation. Yeah. You know, as over time, sediment accumulates. Yes. And, uh, okay, cool. Could represent habitat for in fauna so that's actually you know the sponge dying is creating habitat as well as uh, yes in life they're pre-fossils pre-fossils <laughs> yeah so yeah what's interesting and, and one Just of the things that i think deserves oh. a lot more research than it than it is receiving right now is uh how yeah, it could be. microbial processes mediate uh, iron manganese crust uh, precipitation. Uh, I mean, we know that a lot of these uh, rocks, right, oh. take millions of years to develop millimeters of uh, crust, perhaps, but these sponges are probably much less than millions of years old. Uh, in fact, we've, we've dated a few, and they're much less than millions of years, on the order of maybe thousands of years. And still, um, they look like they're starting to accumulate uh, small, thin veneers of iron manganese crust. So why are they huh. doing that? Is it microbially mediated? Probably, okay, but we don't know a lot about that process and how fast it happens. Yeah, this is uh, on the fast track to dissolution. This, uh, this bamboo coral here, you notice on the right-hand side, these little uh, nice. stalks, these uh, parts of the axis appear to be much skinnier, and that's active dissolution of the skeleton by seawater, likely just moving through the colony. You notice that there are donuts that almost look like, um, you know, joints of you know finger bones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And those are the nodes, which are actually more proteinaceous, which is why they're dissolving more slowly because it's not as soluble. So shows you a little bit of how um, the, both the life and the death of these deep sea coral colonies. Over time, you'll notice there's a lot of sponge rubble, but there's not as much coral rubble lying around. And that's because the, the sponges are made out of silica, uh, and it's less soluble at these depths than the calcium carbonate in the skeleton of the corals. Are there more silica or more calcium carbonate? Uh, which, which ones? I'm there, there's, um, how do you mean that? Just corals in general, like uh, the so composition. Most of the decay. octocorals, most of the octocorals are high magnesium calcite skeletons. Okay. Um, they produce those skeletons, but the stonia corals and the cup corals are usually aragonitic. So there's some variation on how um, different oh. groups precipitate their skeleton. Uh, traumatic fall. <laughs> There's, but there's been some mineralogy uh, that's been done <laughs> on some of these corals that shows that uh, primnoids actually in the genus Candidella can actually produ produce two different types of minerals in the same colony. Their bases are aragonitic, whereas their skeleton is calcitic, and that's just mind-boggling. Very nice. Bamboo coral, internode branching. So that means the branch is going to come off of bet uh, some point between the two nodes, which here are golden, uh, but they're usually darker. They're probably a little degraded. Uh, this would suggest, let me pull out my ye, ye olde handy table of clades of bamboo corals. I don't think it's oh. going to happen. Didn't you say 558 or 458? I said 458, but... I mean, technically, didn't didn't you say the latest time? Any time after this? <laughs> oh. Did uh, Farron said 501. Oh, okay. Mm. Ah. 
carrying you on. And I am fine. I didn't hear it so on SPL, but I think you're on. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have your microphone on for all the world to hear. <laughs> Are there no giant shark like sleeper sharks in the open ocean depths? Um, yeah, I would imagine that there are sharks okay, at this depth. Uh, sleeper sharks can get to be about 2,000 feet deep. So, you know, we just have our little ROV and we're covering quite a tiny distance, to be honest. And so we just don't know what is in the area. Um, but I would say it's likely that there are sharks that go down this deep. So based on process of elimination, these, uh, these bamboo corals we're seeing here, all seem to be in the clay D2, uh, which is dominated by Keratoisis and Echnomyces, two different genera. Um, these look more like Keratoisis, uh, based on some of the pollock characteristics. Uh, but it's one of the few groups that branches at the internodes uh, and forms these large colonies. Sorry, if you. So Nav, are we on track to seven now? Is that our general direction of movement? Uh, we're, we're still heading north. To move north. Okay. Yeah. We just moved over to reorient on the ridge. Sounds good. Steve, unless you want to uh, bypass the plateau, but. No, that's fine. Okay, I great. think we should move up a little bit more. Um, and let's see what time do we have. We have one hour left. So let's say conservatively three hours left on bottom. What's the distance between us and seven right now? On the diagonal? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's 575 meters. Okay. So if we can do a couple... We'll go for zoom. A couple hundred more meters, I think that should set the next watch up for a very nice leisurely stroll up to the summit. Cool. So we'll hand over on the plateau. Come wide. Yeah. Great. Couldn't have planned it better. Bridge now. We can add another five zero meters north. Super long sponge. Yeah, wow. Or coral. What's that? Coral. Coral, yeah. <laughs> Looks like a sponge stalk. It just keeps going. <laughs> wow. Going and going oh, and wow. going. Okay, for soon. Very cool. Yeah. It's up to you if you want to. Uh, you'll probably have some material here too. All right, everyone. It is seven o'clock hey, here. Up, um, we are the four to eight crew, so we have one hour left with all of you. We are continuing to explore an unnamed seamount. We started this dive this morning. If anyone was around for our blue water, um, yeah, that's when we were first descending to start this dive at four o'clock a.m. The bottom depth was 3,032 meters, and now we are up to 2,285 2, meters. Front row, do you think it would be possible to grab one of these rocks whenever uh, it's possible? Okay for you. Uh, Just really? right here? I'm going to sit down here. Um, yeah, I don't want to get anything too big, so maybe something in this area. Okay, yeah, I'll do it. Are we happy to keep the ship moving? Yes. Great. I think that's a good offset. So we definitely have seen an increase in biology. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. <coughs> excuse me, from this morning. Earlier today, we were seeing lots of nuggets. They were really, really small, or definitely smaller um, geological forms. But we now. saw quite quite a bit of those. I was surprised. Uh, yeah. We haven't seen an abundance Sorry, of those yeah. uh, smaller. 
yeah. nuggets of, as we've I been calling them amongst other names. <laughs> I kind of forgot about them to be honest. They seem so Although far away. Definitely we were seeing potato size class also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they got smaller on the other watches and then <laughs> marble bigger and then yeah, we went to sheet flows. Can you circle again? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. It's been quite the dynamic geological form. Well, unless there's a squat lobster on that rock, we've uh, run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, can wins. I get a zoom video? Okay. Um, too far away. Like the tiniest oh. bit. <laughs> Reach. Uh, this is like the time in a row I did oh. that to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. This is this is us. Veronica has been watching you. since 4 a.m. Veronica, you're a wow. You're a trooper. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us all day. It's awesome. Oh, actually, Nick, it was on you. You, it you was, called yeah. that after no, yeah. we landed. As soon as you land, I, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, pick a no, rock. Yeah, that was absolutely you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Karen, I'm sorry I just threw us both under the bus. <laughs> that was unnecessary. Right. The land and switch. <laughs> Gosh. Nick, the figure it out. Switch. <laughs> 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 Get your stuff together. I love it. May a second. Is that too close? I think that's great. <laughs> Have we seen any trace of trash on the seafloor on this dive? That's right. Uh, um, I don't think so. Yeah, so. As far as I know, not on this dive. Um, on this expedition, uh, there were a couple of dives up? where we maybe saw like a tin can uh, here or oh, something. I don't know. This. But. Looks loose, but. You think it's loose? I okay. think I saw it move a little bit. Okay. Try it again. I'll, I'll approach it with a little more commitment here. Gentle persuasion. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. 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 Oh, so much for a small rock. Do we have room for this big rock in the in the box we want to put? Uh, so? yeah. Can you zoom? You can put it in F. Yeah. Okay. Just a little okay. bit wider. Going up. Okay. Jesus, this would be second. a boulder. Oh, I think. Yeah. 22, 20, 20 centimeters. But you know, I think there's plenty of room for it. Right. It's gonna F. come back. Is yeah, the scoop good. enough? Nope. Okay. The scoop's an E. Cool. Nice. It's a beautiful oh, rock. Nice. That is a beautiful it's a rock. rock. It's a fine rock. Not too squishy. We can note that there there are scratch marks from Herc's uh, claws. Really, okay. Uh, that that <laughs> should help identify it. Interesting shape. Yeah. Very. It's almost like a mushroom. Yeah. Yeah. Take it very angular in the sub sub sediment area. Yeah. Okay. Um, we should get this thing stowed. Um, sorry. What was the sample number? One five nine. Thank you. Go wide, please, video. If you're we are. Already. Yeah, we're full wide. So, Nick, the chat wants to know what causes these nuggets versus the larger boulders, just the various types of uh, rock formations that we're seeing. Um, all yeah, that's, that's something we're trying to figure out. Um, you know, whether they're erosional features or if they are, you know, nucleating and really small, uh, you know, just little small rocks, and then uh, the ferromanganese kind of covers these little small pebbles. and. Uh, gravel size clasts, but uh, it's a uh, it's something where should be, like I said, yeah, we, we we don't completely understand it, or at least I don't. <laughs> so the aft one. Okay. They want to know if we can call this rock Tony. What do you think, Nick? Oh wow. It's my brother's okay, name, so I'm gonna go. go. I'm gonna say yeah. yeah I'm gonna give it a thumbs Tony up. the rock. It did not freeze when I thought it did. right on top of the other rock, kind of fell on the inboard side.
got quite the treasure trove on the starboard side box. Tonight. Seriously. <clears throat> and the front porch. Or the front box. It's going to be a good Christmas. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I can't open it. Don't open <laughs> it. <laughs> Absolutely not. Don't even think about it. It's, it's you starting can open to bother it in a few me. hours. Yeah. Okay, well, we didn't find a spot right, lobster. Scram. Cool. Yes. But watch. I do have some consolation prizes. It's so not that you're too kind. Whoa! That's really pretty. Oh Beautiful sponge. My goodness. Wow. Nice camera angle. How can we like down in it? Oh, neat. Really cool. All right. Can you something on the other side? Right now, down the back side. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wonder how, how tall do we estimate that sponge might be? Oh, thank you. Maybe three quarters of a meter. Oh, Roughly estimating. But someone in the chat says that our watch name should be Gabby and the Porch Nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Yo. That's a new one. That's good. Uh, we're getting some gold yeah, we'll out of here. I will happily be a porch nugget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are to share with them. Uh, I feel a song coming here, out. I have, I have a <laughs> second consolation prize, too. Porch nuggets? <laughs> I know I have something nuggets. to do on the transit back. Oh my goodness. Your kindness will never be forgotten. Oh my gosh, thanks, Samantha. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow, ah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. You get a gummy, you get a gummy, oh you gosh, get a I gummy. Cry tears of joy over here. I ran out of gummies the other day and I, I just got replenished. Thank she you, Samantha. She incredibly thoughtfully donated the last of her gummies <laughs> to an ROV technician in need after a long, <laughs> sweaty day. You deserved it. You all did. Shucks. Thank you. Yeah, it, thank you. Your generosity made the day possible. <laughs> I like. I needed that pick me up. Gummies are gummies are good for that. Gummies are magical. I'm gonna covet these. Thanks, Samantha. There's plenty more actually. Where those came from? I'm supposed to pass the lychee ones, right? These aren't all for me. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I already tried. Yeah, I gotta Brittany, be tried. I really did try. Like, I'm just extra special. Right? I sure that there are plenty gummies. more of the gummy bears. Okay. The lychee oh, gummies wow, are. Ridges. Oh, that boulder is very populated. Covered in mushroom corals. Bridge, no? Are we full wide on um, uh, five zero Adelaide meters north? What's that? Yes, we are on Atalanta too, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, both are. It is interesting right now the way it looks, though. Samantha. Not sure why. Thanks. We're happy to get more for another round. <laughs> All right, so we have a couple of rock okay. questions in the chat. Question number one, what do we do with the rocks we collect? And question number two, are all seamounts created by volcanism? Oh, wow. I like that second question, but to answer the first question... Um, <laughs> you like your first one too, right? Yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> that one's more directly related to, to what I do. Uh, so we catalog after cataloging uh, the rocks here on board, we cut them up, um, get a general idea of, of their composition. Uh, we take them back to the lab and we do uh, chemical analyses on them to uh, understand um, their um, mineral makeup uh, and try to use argon-argon dating technique to um, determine their ages. Uh -huh. And uh, after that, we try to recreate hotspot tracks if they are um, um, indeed uh, created by volcanism, which leads to the second question, are all seamounts created by volcanism? And that answer is uh, no. Uh, I mean, technically it is volcanism. Um, it, it's, it's some kind of melting, but it's not from uh, um, you know, these hotspot related uh, events, they're instead uh, through uh, extension or uh, tearing of the lithosphere 
uh, which can cause kind of like a, a like a cut almost on the surface of of, of uh, the continental crust and create um, it, it's still a volcanic event uh, but it's not it's not a deep plume related or um, mantle deep mantle source or even a shallow mantle source it's, it's very 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 shallow and come so wait thank hope you that answered the question i think that did it thanks nick yeah i'm trying to get to the level where i can because i've heard you say that so many times at this point <laughs> it's like i want to be able to repeat it but i just can't because you're so Which eloquent <laughs> all of it <laughs> Very well spoken when it comes to rocks. Samantha. Notice how we, we, we have kind of lost the nuggets up here and the potatoes and the marbles and uh, all of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is something that's clearly specific to the slopes of the seamount yeah. and maybe even the south side slopes, southern slopes, because I don't see any evidence of those. It's mostly pretty smooth crust or up here. Current related as well. I mean, yeah. we, 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 we're definitely kind of agreeing that this area has more current. Um, maybe the other was devoid of current and, and that helped cause or contribute to the presence of all Go those nodules. Please. Oh, that's so interesting looking. It's like... Okay, so th um, remember when I said that uh, all those uh, ophiroid relationships were kind of like neutral, commensal? Mm. This is one of those relationships where it's maybe not so much. This is something I've noticed consistently that these oviocanthids tend to always be associated with bare patches of tissue, and you can see it very clearly right in the middle. And there's a big pr uh, bunch of missing, missing tissue, which I've always thought is probably associated with abrasion um, of the tissue by the arms of the, this particular asterior schematic, or uh, rather uh, Ophiocanthid brittle star. So I'm not sure, you know, if it's entirely Come away, please. a positive or, or neutral benefit. It could actually be negative for the coral. And in this case, that bare colony, uh, that bare part of the colony could have settlement of other parasitic organisms like zoanthids or, um, or anemones. So potentially a creating a, uh, a negative situation for that coral. Oh, nice sponge. Well, I think I know my Halloween costume for this year, though. What's your Halloween costume going to be? I don't know if you're Corey right. skeleton sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Ship's moving, yeah, unless you'd like it to not move. Great. So is it kind of flattening out? Um, is nothing on sonar going up anymore, or are we kind of at the top? It's looking like that. Okay. A little bit of return, but certainly not as um, not the intensity that we were seeing yeah. as we were heading up. So our online viewers want to get in on the rock cutting action. They want to know if there's any video of it or a live stream. Uh, we don't have a live stream of cutting rocks, but we do have some video footage. Um, Nick was kind enough to sit down with me the other week and explain a little bit more about how they date rocks and how first they need to cut the rock open. And so he demonstrated how that works. And so there's some footage of that on, um, I believe it should be on Instagram. Go for some I think they made a TikTok as well. Um, and yeah, I got the chance to cut some rocks myself. It's quite fun. I'm looking forward to doing it some more. You did a great job. You're a great rock cutter. <laughs> Thank you. I heard rumors I'm going to get a certificate soon. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. <laughs> Someone knows. Someone knows. <laughs> There's a, a science lead out there somewhere that knows. a scrap of paper written in Manganese crust. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good idea. Fingerprinted with cut dust. Cutter. Yeah. C U T T R. <laughs> Lobster. Rocker. Um, yeah, I would frame that at home. 
it, it would mean a lot to me. That's good. Megan Let's add another 5 zero like meters to north. Kind of <laughs> right with it. Yeah? Yeah. When it's dry. Apparently you can play marbles uh, with those little nodules. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what it's I hear. possible. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Okay, uh, I saw this bag of chocolate cookies. What species do we want to be the uh, the next bet? Oh, I spoke too soon. <coughs> They're all over the place. Oh, nuggets. Well, good thing we went to the center of the ridge. Yep. There we go. <laughs> and so can we put a target, target here that says edge of rocks? Here's can I here write starts nuggets. Nugule field? Yeah. Edge. Oh. So somebody wants to spell it. And I think, um, yeah. So let's see. Is there any the edge? We're venturing still further north. Still north. Yep. Okay. If science would like to go north or. Let's, let's finish this move and then we can lazily kind of peel off to the northwest. Does okay, this good? move is 55 meters. Okay, sounds good. That'll put us in the in the middle. In the nuggets, and then we can see how far the nuggets go. And, uh, <laughs> Great. Infinite nuggets. See the same the same uh, Semperella uh, sponges. Just like they're all over these nugget fields, but nowhere else. There's nugget specialists. <laughs> nugget specialists. <laughs> We were KFC. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does KFC have nuggets? KFC. I don't know if they do. <laughs> McDonald's? McDonald's? Yeah. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> nope. <coughs> yeah, so I think this is one of the sponges we collected in the scoop a bit earlier, just a little small one, though. But these these nuggets look more variable in size, I would say. Not as consistent, not as yeah, dense. Look at how round some of these are. Yeah, that's something I've noticed is that where where there is biology, you typically have more larger mm. uh, nuggets. Nuggets. Yeah, and I'm wondering if it's just because they're exposed, because there's like current scour. Oh, what was that? Yeah, what that? yeah it's uh, something down there. Okay. Some well, something little critter moving away at high speed. Oh, that one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. There it goes. What is it? Okay, presume. Shrimp? I think, yep, it's right at the bottom of the screen. Oh, there it is. Tiny, tiny parapagurid right with two zoanthids. Backpack? One, one colony, yeah. <laughs> backpack. backpack. It's so tiny. I, I'm... Oop. That backpack's <laughs> too big. Where everything is so... That is a really cool looking little creature. Where everything is so slow down here, I really appreciate a little bit of motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they move post haste. Yeah. <laughs> they got places to be. They gotta go to school. Yeah, name the class. <laughs> we still need an acrobatic snail. Oh, yeah, Gaza species. They are so fast. One one watch saw one the other day. Oh, really? really? Yeah. They're definitely like a delight, right? They're so funny. All right. As soon as we talked about them go. moving, they stopped. I know. I was like, They saw me. Question from Mike in Ohio. Uh, so. Yeah, we collect samples and we put them in freezers here on the ship. Um, he wants to know how cold does the freezer get? Does it get to negative 80? Mm -hmm. We do have that capacity, yep. Uh, most of the samples are stored in refrigerators uh, in preservatives. But uh, there are some samples we're freezing uh, down to minus 80. What would you use the freezer for? What is that? It's pretty cool looking. Seriously. It's a cup coral. Can we get closer on it? Can't quite tell. Yeah, that's the maximum that I've got, so we could okay. come in. zoom out. Come on a little closer. Okay. Possible cup coral, unclear. 
question mark. I guess similar and different in the bottom right. Go for zoom, please. Oh, that one's different, but that is also a cup of coral, yeah. It could be the same. Um, species color is not, yeah, so this is another mm -hmm. cup Good of coral. Shot. Yeah, you can see the skeleton. It, yeah, right really cool here shot. Here on the inside, yeah. Uh -huh. A lot of small cup corals associated with these uh, nugget fields. Steve, is there Air interest opinions. in potentially sampling this? Um, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, it's okay. gonna be it's gonna be hard from where we are yeah, just because we're behind. We don't really have many places to put it. This is a, we have one slurp left that I'm gonna save for the next watch. And uh, in the forward box it says, "Here be monsters" or something. Yeah, there's uh, a dragon in there. <laughs> yeah. There will be no opening of the forward box. <laughs> Absolutely monster. not. Don't even think about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the rules are made to be broken. No, no, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's my head on the line there. <laughs> James doesn't seem like one to make idle threats. <laughs> Does anyone hear that knocking sound? <laughs> Something in there wants to get out. <laughs> There's no hydrophone on the vehicle. We can hear it so the it, it's a tuna kit that wants to get out, and I guess it like kind of makes sense that it would be like a protochordate that would that would have designs on the exit there. Hmm. Right, right. You might say it's even evolved. <laughs> mm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's that. That word is not forbidden yet. Don't give me that. No, word. <laughs> it was a little forced. Okay, a little bit, a little <laughs> tiny bit. Isn't it the name of your sandwich shop? Evolved, melts. evolved melts. Mm -hmm. Evolved melts. Evolved melts. Uh, That's like a good that. name for a sandwich. I, I shop. really like that for a grilled cheese shop. I could. You'd kind of have to do it in like one of those like very geology heavy areas, like maybe the southwest or. Sure. Yeah. Would you name them geology na or biology names like Gorgonzola? Gorgonian or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so fun to do the branding for that sandwich shop. I would love that. Patriotal BLT. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be a rough something looking sandwich. It would have to be like an, a nice chicken salad, like G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. <laughs> Come on. Wise. Ah. Come on. You can get inspiration from Nick Stream. He can describe how that. Samantha, that was like that a derisive look. <laughs> Just like, you're like, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Oh, nope, it's not coming. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it was like a moment of incomprehension with a moment of comprehension together. <laughs> I keep trying that. I keep trying to do the nice pun, but like nobody's nobody's no, falling no. for it, it. It only works in writing. It only works what? It's true. In writing. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but I want it. It's like I just want it. You to gotta work. keep trying, you know. One day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> one day somebody's gonna be keeping up. Yep. Hey, you got an this. associate on this. Uh, oh yeah. Maybe. Favorite coral of the dive. <laughs> Yeah, there is some de dead hydroids for sure. And uh, maybe a ring anemone right there. Uh, yeah, some barnacles. That's about it. So Steve, this move is ending. We're yeah, I think we're ready to transition towards the northwest and kind of right. go to seven. Anything we want to do here before we get moving? Um. No, no. We just want to avoid going down slope at all because we're kind of climbing a nice ridge. So nope. if we need to do a lazy turn, that's okay too. Think they'll have time okay. to reach the summit on the next? Oh, watch. certainly. Yeah. We're, we're going to put in probably at least a couple few moves between now and the end of the half hour. 
Okay, so it looks like the slope is heading up towards 290300. Is that what it's looking like for you two? ROV? At least yeah. that's what it's looking like. Though. I'm facing. Somebody wants to know if this mm -hmm. is the depth where we could see tripod fish. The answer is yes. We did see one a few nights ago, actually. It was swimming in the water column. Usually they're associated with soft sediment uh, or soft bottom slopes. Uh, and it's pretty hard stuff here. We don't expect we'll see them. Although sometimes you can see Great. things like lizard fishes like Bathysaurus on these substrates. Lizard fish are really cool. Have we ever hit anything in the eye with the okay, lasers? Okay, Ooh, so good we're question, do Marty. 290 I don't think so. Bridge, no? Not intentionally. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah it's, I mean, uh, five it's certainly not intentionally. Is that a squat down there? Looks like uh, it. Shrimp. <laughs> Carrot says shrimp. Shrimp. <laughs> oh, it's a shrimp. Wow. Uh, but this, is, this is actually an interesting Wishful thinking. Um, sponge growth. It looks like the bottom half of the colony is dead, but then it had a second life up on top. Is it the or same? Or maybe it's a new, se new settlement. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Looks like a ferronomatid. Negative. At least the one. Uh, two nine zero. I mean, there was a brief hold, so it'll take a minute. Pretty close to me. You're good. No worries. We're not going very fast. Beautiful shot. Yeah. That's cool. Nice view. Uh, a lot of biology on these uh, dead sponges. If you spent some time picking things off, you would find them. Heidi, come on, please. So I'm getting word that the more data link on our website is not loading for some people. So um, if you're wondering how deep we are right now, what is our current depth? It is 2,266 meters. The temperature is 1.9 degrees Celsius. It seems like it's pretty much been consistently that for the past four hours or so. Um, and then, Nav, how far are we from the summit? Great question. We are about 515 meters. And that will be the work of the next watch. Yeah. Since we've got half an hour left. A nice Shout sunset going success. on. Oh, yeah. What was that, Steve? It's about time. time. Nice sunset. It's about time for a camwire sunset. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sure I honestly lost all concept Boom. of time in this room. I thought it was already midnight. Like <laughs> I thought it was the next day with the claws already. <laughs> oh goodness. I literally <laughs> thought I went to sleep with, <laughs> with a new day. Yeah. I did. That yeah. was me today too. It was only for an hour. It was really funny. Yeah. It's interesting how the chapters Yeah, mix. it's going to be so disorienting walking out and it's going to be daylight still. But anyway, yeah, a beautiful sunset on Channel 3 if anybody is interested in seeing mm -hmm. that. Okay, chocolate cookies go to the next shrimp. What are our times? 535. 535. Uh, 542. 542. Is it the next shrimp? Um, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 532. It's coming up in a minute. 532? Wow, bold. Uh, bold, yep. Did anyone see 540 yet? Nope. All right, Seriously. 540. Okay. 552. 552, okay. <laughs> Steve? Chris Agorcia. <laughs> just, just make a note. What's your guess on time? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what are we guessing? The time, next time that we'll see a, uh, a shrimp. Oh, a shrimp? Oh, a shrimp. Go for yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, shoot, I thought it was a squallow. So what, okay. what do you all prefer? <laughs> um, I made my assumption based on shrimp, so okay. I would have to change. Uh, yeah. Five, five, thirty. Yeah, so was I. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to revise my <laughs> Five, thirty-two and thirty-two seconds. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> holding on to five, forty. And come wide, please. Uh, Samantha said, what next shrimp?
I did yeah. say shrimp. You saw a shrimp? That was the first game. This is game two. <laughs> this is game two. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what are we doing? <laughs> what did the quorum decide? Shrimp. Shrimp? Shrimp. 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 So I think shrimp are easier to see, so it's true. better. Mm -hmm. So Steve, you guessed 532 in 32 seconds. Is that because Nick guessed 532? Uh, no, I, d I don't remember what he guessed. I'm just <laughs> okay, well, you're pulling out numbers. <laughs> Those 32 seconds might, <laughs> might be make it or break it. Come on, shrimp. Looking for a... Come on, shrimp. This is also a good game for long car rides. <laughs> <laughs> How many land shrimp do you see? <laughs> <laughs> Go for zoom, please. Sure. Well, yeah, can we zoom there? Um, let's see if there's any associates on these, because we, we missed the squat lobster that was associated with this colony a bit deeper. Uh, can we go around, circle around to the right side or the okay. opposite side? Okay. See if there's anything on there. Zoom, please. Uh, I'm gonna say that's a nope. No. Okay. Nope. Don't see any. <laughs> Scripts. Jason on line Steve, says. Did you see that we got a sample of one of those while you <laughs> stepped out when yeah. Leo was in here? Yeah, I did, and uh, we were we were hoping for the associate uh, crabs too, but we didn't get one with the oh. crabs. Okay. And somebody is wondering, are our watch crews the same for each dive or do we change it up? Um, so we have the same watch crew for, These look like nodules. for uh, our periods. So this is the four to eight crew and then in just under 30 minutes, you're gonna be hearing from the eight to 12 crew and then the 12 to 4, except you won't hear from them because the dive is ending at midnight, I think. So, um, but yeah, we, we break it up into four hour increments and we stick with the same crew for can the we, entire Can we expedition. drop another target and say nodule nugget field? Nodule <laughs> slash nugget field. Okay. It's kind of weird sorting going on. Yeah, got it, some bigger ones and most smaller like, ones. It looks like a lot of these are, are half buried almost in the sediment and you know, the nodules are on top of that sediment, so again, trying to understand what's going I on there. I really like the way it looks. I don't know, something about it is really pretty to me. Very rounded rocks. Those are not datable, right? Or not yeah, ideal. Yeah, you never know. You really got to get <laughs> to know them on the inside. Yeah, good. <laughs> Somebody asked a while ago, does it, uh, what was it? I lost it, but it made me chuckle. Bridge that. Yeah, see how that one is yeah, so Another five zero meters, mm -hmm. two nine zero. And these ones are like substrate. But look at this, uh, this one on the right hand side. We don't have to zoom in on it, but I just wanted to see. There's kind of like a current shadow that goes off like yeah, this. Yeah. Scouring effect from the bigger nodules that yeah, maybe provides that. some. Uh -huh. This one almost looks like it landed here. Yeah, or it's moving. What's the place that has the moving rocks in the southwest? Oh, oh yeah, is that Death that? Valley? Moving rocks. There's a it's place with uh, moving rocks. Yeah. Uh, salt flats yeah. and... Uh, oh, is that a... It starts with a B. I'm Bonneville salt flats? Go for zoom. No, that's for the racing. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they it's when they have um, rains or something, it causes the rocks to shift the locations, and it leaves tracks. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, in it's Death Valley. Mm -hmm. It's called the race track. Mm -hmm. There's another one outside of Death Valley too. Oh, um, sailing stones. Oh, okay, yeah, just like little little rocks tracing through the mud. The 
ephemeral lakes. Good morning, Willem in the Netherlands. Yep, we're still here. You went to bed seven hours ago and we're <laughs> still hanging out exploring the same um, seamount. We're gonna be here for several more hours. Um, like I said before, the four to eight crew is gonna be switching out here in just a little bit and then the eight to 12 crew is gonna be taking over. And then Marty wants to know, how do we choose sites to dive? So all of the sites that we've um, selected as candidates for di our dives uh, have gone through uh, an evaluation process by the scientific community. Their input is sought, as well as um, from oh, uh, NOAA Ocean Exploration, <sighs> which designates oh, some priority that areas Where? that Who we want to gap so. fill, um, for example, with mapping or uh, or dives. Um, and then also input from the, um, from the scientists ashore community uh, through the course of the expedition planning and we generate consensus uh, dive targets that are among the highest priority. Uh, and then we go from there. But of course, it's always good to have backups. We have lots and lots of backups. For example, if we have a storm or weather that doesn't permit us to dive in an area, we can still do some work on the seafloor. So at 537, brown one is the winner with 585. That's her guess. <laughs> We love to see it. Thank <laughs> love you. Love to see it. Excellent. Um, yeah, so this seamount was mapped just yesterday, and here we are diving. So that's how that process works sometimes. Go for Zoom, please. I think those are the most exciting dives, you know, when you don't know something exists or you don't have an idea of what it looks like and then you map it and you dive it. It's really cool to have that kind of responsiveness and only certain numbers, certain numbers of ships have the capabilities of doing that. Uh, nice Romila Gorgia, kind of on the Thank parallel you. axis there. Thank you. It's a dramatic, for formerly known as sponge. Oh. It's very stacky. Yeah. It looks like, it's like a, a Jenga. spaceship. Jenga. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jenga. Spaceship Jenga. Really cool. Really, really cool. Thanks for watching from North Carolina. I hope you get some rest soon. He said he had work in the morning. It's going to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> So curious what the summit will look like here. I know. But not curious enough to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> See the highlights later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's say we're headed back into the boulders. I reckon. You want me to drop a target for the end of the Yeah, that's a good idea. Field? Allows us to visualize the space a little bit better. Boulder field or start of maybe start of Talus. It's not clear if this is going to continue all the way up to the top, but it's probably not going to go back to being flat after this.
So tall. So tall. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I was going to be a good bug. This is only a flesh wound. Oh, no. Oh. This is more than a flesh wound. Oh. That's a big oh, and, flesh wound. This one's been through, through it. The definitely. coral is so empty. It's oh, wow. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. But it was once. Formerly known. It was once, yeah. Is this a pre-fossil? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> biology. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? It's, it's still alive. I'm pretty sure living is a, is a requirement to not be a fossil or About a pre-fossil. Okay. Um, do you think that this coral can ever replenish the polyps that were lost? No, because it's a totally different species. Bridge, no? So this is a cool low bait flow. Uh, right we can here. add five zero meters to it. You can see how like it kind of resembles col columnar basalt, but you can you know it didn't cool evenly enough for it, for it to contract. Uh, with the, with those uniform edges, but you can still kind of see these little cracks propagating. Cool feature. Hmm. Yeah. That coral. Well. Okay, for zoom. I would say this this site's either going to be called Remulagorgia Seamount or. Mount Manukits. I meant manganese nuggets. Where's your vote going for? Go ahead. My vote Thank for you. the name? Yeah. I like Mount Manukits. It rolls off the tongue better. I do too. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a pretty unique to this site to be so sure. extensive, this field. Bathy Bathies, uh, pseudo alternata, probably similar to the one we sampled a few days ago with that worm, the nemesis, the, worm. <laughs> the nemesis worm. Wow, there's some a lot of biology on top of this uh, outcrop. Whoa, wow. This is cool. Yeah, can we lateral wow. along this just to see? How much stuff there is? So it's like that uh, previous overhang that we saw. Do you want me to mark a this? Of, a lot of biology. Yeah, why not? It's boulder with a high-density coral community. We're heading west, so that means it's oriented north-south. I don't know if that makes a difference. But it seems like uh, the cur the colonies are oriented east-west, so that suggests that the prevailing current that's in this area that they're taking, um, that they're responding to is north-south, which makes sense uh, if we have like a northeaster, north-northeasterly uh, okay, prevailing so current. Is that a, is there something in the top of that? I think so. Yeah, it might be a small shrimp or something. I think most of these bamboo corals are the same D2s. D2 clade, keratoasis. Viewer online wants to know what is one of the most unusual creatures or things that have been seen? Have we discovered any shipwrecks or dolphin carcasses? Excellent question. Um, I think probably on this cruise, maybe the most unusual thing that we've seen was just a few days ago. There was a that mystery gelatinous creature. Steve, do you want to tell them about that one, maybe? Oh, yeah. I, w I think um, there's a more trend, more positive trend that it's probably a tunicate of some type. Hmm. Um, but uh, we're trying to identify it, and it's not representative of any, any known 
species that we're aware of, at least out here. So um, we have plans to do some genetic work on it when it gets back to the museum, and hopefully we should have a better idea of where it falls in the Tree of Life. But it's a very strange gelatinous um, organism, at least when we saw it. Similar to the one we have in the box that shall not be opened. <laughs> Absolutely not. Don't even think, think about, about it. About it. <laughs> <laughs> um, have we discovered any shipwrecks? No, not on these dives for this expedition. I believe that um, in the past, the EV Nautilus has been a part of exploring um, some shipwrecks. <laughs> sit down, I'm stretching my back. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so in the past they've been, they've done some shipwreck exploration, but not uh, for this expedition. That's not one of the objectives. And dolphin carcasses, we haven't seen any of those. Uh, sometimes we see whale falls, but again, not on this expedition. We haven't seen any yet. Thank you. A little scours there. Hmm? Another one here. Yeah. Deep, a cup of coral. I go for some, please. French bamboo coral. Got some friends hanging out up top. That's all right, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, for Zoom. Okay, what do we got here? I want to try, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just coral. resigned at this point. <laughs> uh, though it's a bamboo coral. Uh, that's what the list we're going to do. It's reminiscent of the ones we've been seeing so far. Is it now? Kind of looks like uh, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> really hard. The other bamboo coral? I'm really struggling. Uh, the one that looks like bamboo coral but is actually a Chrysogorgia. Oh yeah, the Romula Gorgia. Yep, that one. Yep. <laughs> yep, that one. <laughs> Bridge now. We can add another five zero meters, tune in zero. Getting a question in the chat, if we have made any first discoveries of new species or anything like that. Um, and I believe that the answer to that is yes. I don't know if we've found any new coral species on these expeditions yet 
or these dives of this expedition. Um, I want to say maybe some squat lobsters, but Steve, you probably know a lot more about that than I do. Yeah, we have found uh, new corals. Uh, a couple of them are uh, secondary collections of, of uh, species we identified as new last year. Uh, but there's also some new collections that are just really, really bizarre and likely new species. But a lot of that work has to happen when we get back to the lab. Um, and when we have so to can you confirm if any species are new on the ship, or do you have to do more tests back in, in the we laboratory? We can have suspicions. Uh, you know, For example, if there's a, a, a really well-published taxonomic key, and you key out your coral according to characteristics that are um, descriptive of those species, and you end up in some you know, dead-end place with a character that doesn't describe any of the um, corals that are published species. Um, the other option is if you are familiar with you know, a list of known species and this one looks totally morphologically different, there's a high likelihood that it may be a new species of, of coral, for example. But these days, um, we use integrative taxonomic approaches. So we use different types of methods including uh, microscopy uh, and, and genetic approaches. So it takes a little bit of effort. And uh, usually, if you can do those two things, you have a, a very high likelihood of describing a species that will be valid for a long time. more coral questions. Somebody wants to know, is this coral alive? Is it healthy and normal? Has it been affected by the heat yet? Uh, heat, no. Go for um, please. So interesting, you know, a few dives ago, we started talking about thermo thermohaline circulation and how the ocean basically turns over, uh, and how new deep waters are created and bottom waters are upwelled and, and return to being surface waters. And it, it, it actually takes something on the order of 4,000 years for, um, or thousands of years to have and a full way, circulation, a full turnover of a parcel of water uh, that starts its life getting downwelled in the North, North Pacific or uh, North Atlantic. So it takes quite a bit of time for large scale temperature changes to propagate through um, the deep sea. It is a very large mass of water and uh, yeah, these things take time. <laughs> yeah, so we are seeing lots of um, oh gosh. live coral for sure. And then we're seeing um, <laughs> some sponges. And I think that you, yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot of sponges that have gone on, but as Steve mentioned before, their skeletons are different than corals are, so their uh, silica skeletons take a much, much, much longer time to, um, I guess, decompose than that of the coral. All right, everybody. So it is about that time for us to make our watch change. So the 8 to 12 crew has shown up. They are in the house. So they're going to be taken over, and um, we're going to be signing off. So thank you, everybody who's joined us for the 4 to 8 watch. If you're staying on, I hope that you see something amazing. And we'll see you again on the next dive. All right, thanks, everybody.
Show Atlanta some love. Hey, Dave. Atlanta looks, Atlanta looks great. How are you? I'm good. Hello, hello, hello. Cool. Can you please come super duper double, super triple extra wide on Herc Zeus? That's all you, you get right there. I think it's a great idea for you to come up on Delta a bit. Think yeah, I'm going to get a little ahead, then I'm going to stop, then yeah, we can do that. Do it, yeah, that would be nice. So should I go on with the vessel move? It's the current one is coming to an end. Uh, sure, you can keep going. Okay, sounds good. All right, I'm going to hold here. You can drop a weight any whenever you're ready with Atlanta. All right. Does this look all right for Delta? Swell. Swell. All right. That's the wrong button. There we go. Oh. There we go, Bubble. <laughs> Try not to do anything weird with Bubble, but I know it's going to fail. There it goes. Ah! Bridge, no? Please, let's step 50 meters during 290 degrees. Speed. Point two knots. Roger, thank you. All right, please do not auto salute. I am begging you. No. Here, let me do this first. Before you hit the before you hit the blue button, mm -hmm. I can do this. Now you can hit the blue button. Ah, doink. Which one? This Which is the one? blue one. Okay. <laughs> Finally. This is very funny to me. Yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> 